Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Let's start with a story in which our OP figured out his offender on his own and got justice. Listen to the end to find out how. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. I found him. On June 18th, I was rear-ended by a gray Dodge Ram. I caught it on my dash cam, and the man who hit me appears in the video twice. I got a picture of his insurance card, damage done on both vehicles, and license plates. He told me he'd like to take care of this out of pocket as he didn't want his insurance rates to rise. I was okay with this. I've done it before with no issues. The next week, I sent my truck in for an estimate. Up until this, we'd been texting back and forth with no issues. I emailed him a copy of the estimate, and communication stopped. After hearing nothing from him for three days, I called his insurance and filed a claim because I'm not about to be jerked around. They came back in the same day telling me he'd stopped paying back in March, so his insurance had been canceled. They could not honor the claim. I was furious. I called and texted him relentlessly with no response. He was not going to pay, and neither was his insurance, despite his insurance card saying it expired July 1st. I called my insurance, and even though I was not at fault, I'd have to pay $500 for repairs, deductible. I immediately went to the Denver County Court and filed paperwork for small claims, then on to the Sheriff's Department to serve him paperwork. The police were no help, shocker. The address he provided on his insurance was falsified, and after telling the deputy four times to run his license plates, he finally did. The same address was used to register his vehicle. There was no other way we could find him, so I was hopeless. I was going to pay for this D-head's damage, and he was going to get away with it. Until this morning, I decided to do a few Google searches for his name, Denver. A ripoff review popped up. A man with the same name had redone a patio and did a crappy job at it. Fortunately for me, I thought I'd go ahead and call the company. I asked the receptionist for an estimate slash consultation to do some yard work and specifically requested name of DeFace as I heard he was great at this stuff. She said he was great at landscaping, so I asked, he's the one who drives the gray Dodge truck, right? She said, yes. My heart stopped. That was all I needed. I called the deputy who was attempting to serve him, and they're currently on their way to serve the paperwork at his company. I effing found you, and I'm going to make sure you pay me. The court date is August 12th. I'll see you then. Nice. That feeling? Super sleuth extraordinaire? Not enough arms in the world to hold all that goodness for you. And our next story. Parking company upset my mom. You upset my mom. You upset me. This happened around 20 years ago. The internet was a new and wondrous thing and only had by very rich people and companies. Parking on private land was essentially unregulated and cowboy companies were clamping and or fining people for parking with absolutely no saving through any violation. Parking companies were universally loathed. Because the parking companies are loathed, they learned not to give out their address. They all hide behind company numbers and post office boxes. They don't give out their phone number. They really don't want angry people walking in to see the manager. All correspondence is to a P.O. box number. The only way to contact them is by P.O. box number. Whether it's to send them a check for a penalty or to complain about the penalty, it all has to go via the P.O. box number. Cast. My mother, mom. Me, me. The parking company, B Turds. Post office regional manager, Posty. What happened? Mom went to the cinema and parked, as she's entitled to, in a disabled space. When she got out, she had a ticket for parking in a disabled bay. Mom maintains the badge was on display. It basically lived on her dashboard, but there was no photo evidence taken back then. It was simply Mom's word against the B-Turds. Mom wrote to the B-Turds and explained that she had a disabled permit and was allowed to park where she did. The B-Turds wrote back and said the fine was now doubled, and unless she paid in seven days, she'd be taken to court. Mom, now distraught, called me in tears. This was the first I knew of her predicament. I shot round to comfort her and collected the paper she had, the original fine ticket, and their reply to Mom's letter and her blue badge, the disabled parking permit. I also got to sign a letter of authority so I could act on her behalf. I told Mom not to worry about it and that I'd deal with it. I work for a large insurance company and can use the internet terminal in the library, 
We are, as I said, above at that stage of the internet where it's a rare thing, and finding out the information I did would have taken several weeks, if not months. There are not many sites to surf at this time, but one that is is Companies House, where you can get the information that companies must disclose to be lawful. Ten minutes later, I have the names and addresses of the two company directors and the registered address of B Turds Limited. Their premises, which could have been anywhere in the UK, never mind anywhere in my city, Leeds, happened to be between where I worked and where I lived, and I passed it twice a day. I couldn't remember where 201XXX was, but I'd look out for it on my way home. And on my way home, I realized that 201 was in fact a building site. At a guess, everything from 190 to 230 had been removed to build blocks of student housing. Temporarily stumped, I went home to ponder what to do next. My wife, side character but gorgeous nonetheless, said, well, how do they get their post if they're not there? And I realized they must have told the post office they've moved and not needed to change the P.O. box number they're using. The next day, I'm back at the internet machine in the library where I'm doing a spot of research on the post office and P.O. box numbers. I called the post office and asked to speak to the most senior person available. Posty, how can I help you, sir? Me. I've got a problem with B. Turd Company. They're threatening my mother and hiding behind a P.O. box number, which I believe to be an offense. I know the company is registered at 201XXX, and as you may know, 201XXX is a large building site. Posty, can I call you back, sir? About an hour later. Posty, hello, sir. I've inquired, and you are correct. Even if we needed proof of the threats, they've broken several post office rules, and we're still getting their post as they've moved only 50 yards from where they were and have the same postman. Who didn't know they were supposed to notify a change of address to the chiefs and not just tell the local delivery guy? Me. So what happens now? Posty. I'll block all their mail at the sorting office and will only release it when I'm satisfied you've been contacted. Me. But how do I contact them? Posty. Bring a letter to the sorting office before 8 tonight, ask for Posty, and I'll make sure it's delivered tomorrow. Me. Haha. So I wrote a letter that went something like this. Dear b Turds, R.E., my mom. I act with full authority of my mom. On date, at place, your company representative placed a penalty notice on her car for parking in a marked disabled bay. She admits this, but maintains she was displaying her blue badge. I attach a copy of the badge. In an effort to contact you, I contacted company's house and thereby discovered that you were not at the registered address you were supposed to be at. This is an offense, and I've reported this to Company's House with a view to having the company and its director struck off. I subsequently contacted the post office, and they also take a dim view of moving without telling them. As such, they've suspended your mail until you contact me with your address. I actually care not what your address is, but I will tell the post office I'm happy as soon as I hear from my mother that she's happy. Yours, son. I took this round to Posty, who was wearing the grin of someone not entirely unhappy to be involved in shafting a parking company. He said they get around 500 letters a day, usually, but tomorrow, just this one as he took my letter from me. I went home, poured myself a whiskey, then I called my mom and said that I was sure it would all be okay and that she must call me if she heard from b Turd Company. That call came just after 1 p.m. the following day. Mom said a lovely man had turned up on her doorstep with a letter saying the matter was dropped, apologizing for any inconvenience, and carrying a massive bouquet of flowers. She said she was especially keen for her to call me. The post office then called 20 minutes later, and though tempted otherwise, I said I was happy, and as far as I was concerned, they could have their mail again. Love it. Hold their only way of communication, and therefore income hostage. Just love it. And our last story. You don't get paid for two weeks. You quit, not fired. This happened in Tampa, Florida decades ago. But you don't soon forget a burn like this. The boss at the starter and generator rebuilding shop let his nephew bring his personal car to the shop to work on it. Lots of power tools, hydraulics, solvents, and flammable chemicals. Young, dumb, and full of crap, he decided to clean out his gas tank, already removed and just inside the double doors, by sticking the oxy ASEC cutting torch in the gas filler tube of the gas tank. Gas tank became a rocket, left the floor, did a weird angular spiral down the warehouse-sized building, hit the end wall, then it again hit the floor, the wall, ceiling, and floor, ending up just about where it took off from. 
I complained to the boss that this guy was just smart enough to be dangerous without meaning to and that I could not work in a place with someone like him. The boss, who reminded me of that joke about what do you do when you have 32 rednecks in a room, a full set of teeth, just grinned and said, well, sounds like you just quit. To which I replied, fine, give me my last paycheck and I'm out of here. His grin got bigger. I don't have to pay you till we do the payroll, which we do every two weeks. You were not fired, you quit, so you can just leave. I was walking out the door and I said over my shoulder, damn, now I have to go out and bum a quarter for the payphone so I can call OSHA and tell them why I had to quit. That grin vanished like a drop of sweat on a red hot iron. You go in the waiting room and I'll have a secretary cut you a check. So I did quit and leave and I also called in a report to OSHA. Good for you. Hell with that guy. You don't use paychecks as a weapon. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.